Okay. So, uh, uh, you can download the uh, the lecture here. Okay. So, uh, after the introduction, right now I would like to uh introduce the principle of the sensor or the transducer. Okay. So, uh, this is our uh our outline. So, beginning, I will talk about the the measurement. Uh, concept. Uh, I think this is a very fundamental one first. And uh, after that, I will show you the most kinds of the instrument uh, so far from the mechanic for the hydraulic and the electrical. Uh, right now is the most uh, uh, used uh, so far. And of course, we have uh, acoustic, optical, radar, and uh, clearly the sound and the GPS. So, uh, Right now, because I think uh, you guys are from the engineering uh, basics, so what are the measurement target for your interest? I mean, uh, engineering interest, well, take care of the force, right? And uh, maybe the displacement, okay, for or in terms of the strength or stress. Okay, so this is a very basic parameters for the observation we are trying to find. Okay, for the purpose of the engineering interest. And uh, the others, physics and the environment interest. So like the temperature, humidity, stability. This is the, okay. This is the, I mean, uh, the clean of the water. So maybe you will you know like that ability, okay? And uh, of course, we can uh, observe the light and the sound uh, in the environment. Okay, so this is our interest. So how can we measure? of this uh, target we want. But before you start it, I would like to have a very quick but very important concept for all of you. And uh, we have uh, two terms. One is the resolution. Okay, so this is in Chinese. I would like to... Okay. Did you guys have uh, to learn the Chinese course? No, no need. Okay. Because my student from uh, the foreigner student, they needed to learn the Chinese. Okay. For the, uh, for the master degree. Okay. Uh, so, there's uh, two terms. One is the resolution. The other one is the accuracy. So, if you are plot this two turn into the chart, I mean like the reference value, like the temperature, I mean the real one, temperature, maybe right now 20 degrees Celsius. This is the real one uh, in the environment. But however, if we have uh, some sensor and attack uh, the temperature uh, by ourselves, this is just like the, the target of the shooting gun. Okay, we have uh, four cases. So the A is the worst. What's that mean? Because the central one will be the reference. I mean the real. The highest the point. Okay, this is the real one of the central. But however, if I have a measurement point each time, if, for example, I have a five times of a measurement each time I have got a value. So you can find it is very diverse. Right? <laughs> 
Okay. And uh, this is the worst case. Why? Because I have the diverse data, like the, uh, if you already learned from the statics, uh, you will learn, uh, you, you will know like the PDF. Okay. So this is the distribution of your measurement. So for this case, what happened? It means that I have a large, a very wide uh, distribution of the measurement. Okay, so let me uh, have a very quick. So for the A case, maybe I have this kind of the distribute, right? But however, the average, I mean the mean value of this red is not locate, uh, does not locate at the, the real one. Uh, so we will call this is the error uh, usually, but of course this is the accuracy, right? So this is uh, for the A case. Okay, for the C case, will be like the black black one. I have a higher density, means like a small distribution. Means like each time you have a very good shot, very close shot. But however, you have a distance with the central one. So you may have an error, okay, from the reference. So what is the B? What is the B case in terms of if you try to plot in the in this case? You shift the line. Yes. We will shift actually for the B case here, maybe we are like this one. Also, this is the data is diverse. But actually, if you have a mean value, I mean the average, you will get a very good, very high accuracy because the mean value well close to the, the real one. And uh, of course, this is the best case ever. You have a very good uh, readability, okay? And uh, the mean value is close to the, the reference. So for the D case, well, it will be like this one. Okay. But however, uh, maybe this case can be acceptable uh, if each time the error is a constant. So maybe we can have uh, what we call the calibration. So we can uh, calibrate the error back to the uh, uh, real, uh, real value. So I think this C, B, C, D case uh, it is, uh, can be used for the measurement. So uh, this is the idea of the resolution and accuracy. And uh, this is the what we call the re repeatability, repeat uh, ability. And uh, this is the, maybe you can use the arrow uh, usually, right? Okay, uh, sorry, this is for in the Chinese, but I would like to uh, explain. Uh, so the resolution I already talked about. So uh, if you try to have, if you have a ruler, uh, uh, you already have a the rule, right? So the ticks on the ruler, the smallest one is the mean resolution. Okay. Uh, of course, maybe only one millimeter. Uh, all right. But however, uh, in the commercial product of the sensor, mostly they will show the maybe point zero one percentage of the FS. So what is the FS? means like the full scale, the full scale, or in usually what we call the range. Okay, so for the ruler, okay, for this example, 
So what is the range of the fifteen centimeters? Yes, from zero to the fifteen centimeters. So if I have uh, fifteen centimeters of this full scale or the range, how about the one hundred percent? I mean the one percent of the, the FS. It's mean that maybe I have a uh, fifteen or one hundred. Uh, this is the full scale, right? So if I have a uh, FS like this one, and uh, how about the uh, It's meaning one point five millimeter, right? Okay. So for the most case, I mean, uh, for the commercial product, they will show both in the full scale and of course the resolution. So why why uh, usually we have uh, the full scale uh, and the corresponding the resolution? Uh, depends on the uh, full scale because uh, for the most sensor I mean of course we will talk about later right now it is based on the electricity okay so uh, for the case just I say if I have a piezo meter for the, for the water pressure meet, uh, the sensor okay so Maybe I can measure the depth range from the zero to the uh, ten meters. Okay, so this is my full scale. I have a sensor, uh, and I try. I have a cable. Okay, so I'm trying to measure the, the variation of the water level range from the zero means this is the zero and the ten. So mostly, maybe they will show uh, 10 meters of the full scale and uh, times with maybe uh, 0 0.1 percentage for the uh, resolution. So how about of this? Mm. What is the resolution? If I have uh, 100. 10? Uh, so this is the uh, centimeter, right? So for this, I mean the resolution will have uh, 1 centimeter. Okay. Okay, so you. Okay. But however, if I try to measure. the variation of the water level from the 0 to the 100 meter depth. Uh, sometimes they will be used for the, the reservoir, a very uh, large reservoir variation. So, if I use the same FS, so what is the resolution at all? Maybe 10 centimeters. Okay, so it is depends on your uh, full scale, but of course it is. Mm, I mean, if you looking for the uh, one hundred meter variation measurement, I think maybe ten centimeter is enough. Okay, for the practice. But however, if you trying to have a much higher uh, a resolution, for this case, if you trying to measure. One centimeter variation means that maybe we have a point zero one percent of the FS. Of course, maybe we have a, some kind of this sensor, but however, will be much expensive uh, beyond your budget. Okay, so. We will discuss the idea 
of the 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 uh, the resolution accuracy and also the budget. We trying to find the balance, uh, for the monitoring. Okay. So this is the full scale. And uh, what is the sensitivity? Uh, means like uh, for the case, if I have a uh, one degree of the temperature variation. Okay, for the maybe for your watch or your cell phone, when we have a uh, one degree Celsius of the temperature variation, so because we try to measure the, the voltage or the, the current, uh, 就是说我用一度的变化，啊，最多可以在这个sensor上面有多少的变压的改变。Okay, so the sensitivity means that how much will the level of the change uh, typically uh, it is like the voltage or the electrical current uh, when it face to the example one degree of the temperature variation. Okay, so if I have a larger sensitivity means that I can respond a larger of the voltage or the electrical current uh, based on the single or the unit uh, like the temp one degree of the temperature okay so this is uh, uh, the definition of the sensitivity and uh, this is the zero offset what we, what we call the drift uh, it is just like the, the accuracy okay so it is it. the same, the idea is the same. The drift or the zero offset. Okay. But just I said uh, because this is should be depends on the long term stability. Okay, for some kind of the sensor or the transducer, or just so you the accuracy or what we call the zero drift or zero offset will change with the time okay so for the first maybe it's a very very small drift but maybe after one year they have a larger uh, drift uh, because sometimes sometime we have uh, uh, the best drift uh, always for the sensor so that's why we need to calibrate uh, the sensor uh, periodically. Okay, so uh, this is the basic idea at all. Okay. So uh, right now I show you some uh, table. The first table here uh, is my mean the level against to the, the dust. So someone may be already see IP767 so what does that mean? Oh, uh, because right now like for example your cell phone uh, I, iPhone uh, or your watch they will assign IP67 so what does that mean? the first number is the level against to the dust so for the 6 this means that uh, totally protect against dust. So no more dust uh, get inside of your sensor or your cell phone. And the second number is the level of the waterproof. Okay, for this one, seven for the case. Protect it against the, the effect of the immersion between the 15 centimeter and the 1 meter I mean uh, if you put uh, your cell phone into the 15 to the, the 1 meter depth of the water at the least this is the waterproof okay so uh, some kind of the uh, spec you need to understand okay Be because if you are trying to manage the monitoring, if you are an engineer, 就是说讲你是工程师, 
if I have a project and I have a the limited budget. So for the case, if I try to monitoring the stability of this building, so what kind of the sensor will you choose? And uh, what the accuracy for the resolution of the sensor you will use for this project uh, if you only have the limit budget. So in this class, we will show you the idea and the principle of choosing the, the optimal sensor ever. Okay, so this is the spec. Maybe you need to concern uh, before you choose the sensor. Okay, because sometimes maybe some sensor will only install inside indoor. So we don't need a very high level of the IP. Uh, maybe only IP five, six, it is enough. But for the outdoor monitoring, all the sensors should be like, the level should be higher than the six, seven. Okay, so this is the spec you need to know that before you choose the sensor. Okay, this is in turn in the Chinese. Here, uh, this is a very good example uh, for the uh, calibration. So, so far, I would like to say, uh, for this chart, the x axis means the interest of the engineer, just as I said. Maybe this is the pressure for the displacement. Or for the environmental problem, this will be the stability, temperature, or the concentration of the PM 2.5, okay, for the air, air pollution. So this is the real value. But however, if I try to use the sensor to transform, I mean the transform the temperature into the signal of the computer, Okay, means that I need a calibration curve for the transform uh, for this kind of the transformation. Oh, 就是说, <coughs> for this kind, the sensor output will be like the, the electrical current or the voltage. Okay, maybe next I will show you why we will use this kind of a sensor for the measurement. But however, you will see this is the real value. This is my measurement of the sensor uh, output. Okay, so based on this rating curve, this is what we call the rating curve. We can change, for example here, <coughs> If this is the voltage, okay, uh, maybe the unit is the minifold. Maybe I have a 15 minifold. So if I, I already have this kind of the rating curve, so I can know that maybe this is the 20 degrees of the Celsius. Okay, so next maybe I have a 20 minifold measurement response of the sensor. So I can use this rating curve to transform the voltage uh, into the the, uh, the degree of the Celsius. Okay, so each sensor for the commercial one sensor, you if you buy a sensor, you will get a maybe a proof or the certification of what of this calibration curve that will show you a equation maybe a equation a linear equation or I'm not sure uh, the exponential equation but however you are get at least one equation to change the voltage into the temperature. So this is what we call the rating curve. 
Oops. Okay, here this is the rating curve. But you can find back to the, the idea uh, of the accuracy and the resolution. You can find here this is the case of what? Maybe like this one. B case. Okay. And for this one, it's a much perfect measurement with a very high accuracy and a very high resolution. So they will be like this. The case of the D. Okay, so you can uh, prove the concept uh, from the rating curve uh, into the, the accuracy and the, uh, and the resolution. But however, just as I said, this is the idea response ever, idea one. But actually, maybe we have uh, some offset. This is the zero offset. This is what we call the zero offset. Oops. Okay. But I think this is okay because I can use the, the calibration to cancel the error ever a very simple idea but however if you have this kind of the situation means that with the time or with the measurement value change i have a different response compared to the rating curve this is the original rating curve but however with the time I have a different slope, okay, so there will be the uh, problem, okay, of the sensor ever, or some kind we have a nonlinear response, okay, so this is will be the, uh, the problem of the sensor, okay, so that's why we need a calibration, uh, maybe one year each uh, calibration, recalibration. Okay, so I think this is the basic idea uh, for you guys. And the third one, this will be the problem one, problem two. Uh, this is will change with the time. And uh, this is the nonlinear problem. Okay, and uh, the third part is what we call the hysteresis. So what is that? Have you ever learned from the hysteresis? Okay, so what is that? Depending on the previous value, the value of the sensor will yeah, be different. Yeah, so you can find when you have uh, increase, it follows the path of this one. But if you have a decrease, they will follow the, the other path. Means that the path of the increasing and the decreasing are not the same. Sometimes we may have a very big hysteresis ever. So maybe like this one. Okay. So this is the problem of the hysteresis of the sensor. So for the case of the first one and the second one and the third one, uh, we need to pay some attention of if we have uh, uh, the problem of these sensors. Okay, so right now I'm uh, read, uh, just finished the very basic idea of the measurement ever. So uh, since we have all the students uh, here, right now, okay, uh, let me start the recording.